Hello everyone, in today's video we will create a DIY self-watering system for a house plant. To make things simple we will break the entire system into three smaller functional parts and I will explain all of these in detail and show step-by-step -step instructions on how you can build your own. First part of the system will be the sensor units. As the name implies, these units will be collecting information like soil moisture, temperature and ambient light for each individual plant and report it back to our central unit. We will need one sensor for each plant that we want to monitor. The second part of the system is collector or the central unit. Its purpose is to collect information from the sensors, process it and decide what action needs to be taken. Actions can be for example turning on the water pump to water the individual plant, or opening blinds to make sure plants are getting enough sunlight or simply just passing the collected information to the dashboard unit. Since we have all this information, it would be nice to log it into a database and then have a dashboard where we can plot it, examine it and do all kinds of cool stuff with it. So our third part of the system will be the dashboard. This is where we'll log all the information into a database and also have a very powerful web interface that allows us to view the data, track trends, send alerts or even integrate with another system like your smart home or a home assistant. As you can see, this is going to be a very simple project but it will take time. And in order to make it easier to follow, we will break it down into multiple smaller videos where we can explain each functional part of the system. Another reason for this is that it takes time to source all the parts, have boards manufactured and shipped back to me and so on. So make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell so you get notified when the part 2 of this series get uploaded. Ok, so in this video, which is part 1, we are going to build a sensor board that we will then stick into a soil and have it measure soil moisture, temperature and light. For my use case, these three are already an overkill but feel free to add more sensors if you want. As a starting point, I'm going to use a form factor of this popular soil moisture sensor board that you can get cheaply online. However, these boards have a couple of drawbacks in my opinion. For example, they output unbuffered analog signal, which means you need analog to digital converter or ADC to read values. Also, you will need a dedicated wire for each sensor. This means if you're using, let's say 10 of them, you will have at least 10 wires plus power to your main board and that main board also has to be able to handle 10 A to D channels. This can turn messy very quickly and potentially you may have to worry about signal integrity, cable length and other stuff that as a hobbyist you probably don't want to worry about. So to help potentially solve this problem or at least offer a different solution we will design our own board that costs roughly the same but it's significantly more powerful and customizable. We are going to use a microcontroller that will be taking measurements like soil moisture, temperature and ambient light and convert them from analog into digital values. Also, this microcontroller is going to act as a I2C slave device. If you're not familiar with the I2C, there is a link in the video description to get you familiar with it. Now, with the I2C feature, our microcontroller can sit on a I2C bus with many other devices and exchange data back and forth with the I2C bus master. Benefit of this approach is that we need only 4 wires, 2 for power and 2 for I2C bus communication. But since we are using a bus, we need 4 wires to communicate with 1 or 101 of these sensor boards. Also, since I2C bus shares pins between devices, we can daisy chain sensors, we can put them in a star configuration, or have any other hybrid topology that works for us and we should be okay. The sensor board is very simple and can be made with almost any microcontroller. I've used ATtiny817 as well as STM32L011. In this video, I will stick with STM32 since ARM Cortex M0 is probably more popular among hackers and hobbyists. We will use its internal peripherals to sense soil moisture and pair it with additional temperature sensors for temperature sensing and also use a light dependent resistor or LDR for short to approximate ambient light. To measure soil moisture, we will use a very simple method which is to leverage a variation of capacitive sensing. 
One pin of the microcontroller is going to output a square wave signal. This signal then gets fed into our capacitive sensing electrode via 1K resistor. Then, we will use a diode and a capacitor to form a peak detector. Add a large bleed resistor to slowly decay that peak value over time, and also we have this zero ohm resistor if we want to add any filtering. Finally, peak detector value will get fed into our analog to digital converter where we can measure that peak. Since our electrode is going to be buried into the plant soil, we will simplify things and assume that the change in electrode's capacitance is mostly due to capacitive coupling between our electrode and whatever is right next to it. So in our case, that will be either soil plus air gaps if soil is dry, or soil plus water if soil is wet. We can later use this information to calibrate our sensor and measure or estimate the soil moisture. To sense ambient light, we will again take a simple approach and use a light dependent resistor or LDR. If you feel like you need a very accurate or calibrated readings, you can add a more sophisticated ambient light sensor. But for my use case, LDR will do. Main reason is that we don't really need to know exactly how many lux plant is seeing. We are more looking to track periods of direct sunlight versus shade versus night. We will use two resistors to bias the network and then add a light dependent resistor that will change this value based on the amount of light. Finally, this value will be read by a microcontroller's built-in analog to digital converter. For temperature sensing, we could use an NTC or a PTC resistor, but I wanted to show you how we can also create a separate internal I2C bus within our sensor board. This one is completely separate and isolated from our main system's I2C bus. This will allow you to play around and expand the array of sensors that are available on this sensor board by simply connecting any additional sensors to the same bus. Once we have put all the pieces together and through the magic of video editing, the boards are manufactured and firmware is brought up and ready to go. We power up the device and we can see that it's outputting debug information on a serial port to tell us what is the ambient temperature, soil moisture ADC reading and ambient light ADC reading. If I put the board into water, you can see soil moisture value is changing. If we cover up the ambient light sensor, the ambient light sensor value changes. And finally, if I hold my finger on the temperature sensor, it will warm up and we can see the temperature value rising. That's awesome, everything seems to be working fine. We have everything up and running just like we want it. As always, all the files are open source, open hardware, so you can check them out from my GitHub repository, which is in the video description. So with that, one last thing remains, which is to do a demo of how we can read the data over I2C bus. We still have to build our main controller unit, which we will do in the part 2 of this series. So for now, I'll use Bus Pirate as I2C master and take readings manually. Keep in mind that in our final system, this will be done automatically and without any interaction on our part. Ok, so as per I2C protocol, first we provide device address that we want to talk to. The last bit in the address is read or write flag indicator. We will clear the flag to indicate we would like to write data to the device. After address byte comes the data that we want to send to the device. Here we are going to use a simple protocol that is easy to understand but also allows us to expand the network later on. So the second byte is going to be a command that we want to send to the device. In this demo it will be read temperature followed by the data type and finally how much data we want to send. This packet tells the device we would like to read the temperature data when we do a next read. Once we send it on the debug output of the sensor, we can see that it has successfully received the message, processed it, and it's now waiting for us to read the data back. Now we will send the same I2C address, but set the read flag to indicate we want to read the data from the sensor board. After that, we will read bytes one by one until entire package is received. Let's analyze the response. 
first byte is always command to which sensor is responding, which we can see matches our previous read temperature request. Then what is the data type followed by the data length and finally the actual data that we requested. If we look at the data, we can see that we have successfully read the temperature data from the sensor board over I2C bus. We can repeat the same process for soil moisture or ambient light and we can do this as often as we like. And with that, we have successfully designed our sensor board, which is the first part of larger system for taking care of our house plants. Keep in mind that in part 2 of this video series, we will build the main controller unit that will seamlessly collect all of this data and store it into a database. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss when that video comes out. Thank you for reaching this part of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did working on it. If you liked the video or found it useful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now!